Um, Yoti is all about how you prove who you are or how old you are. Um, and it came about in quite a strange way. Um, one of our founders was running an online gaming business and found that a lot of people um, were able to set up an account, but there was always 10, 15, 20% that found it really hard. Thin file individuals, people that didn't have a track record online people that didn't have identity documents. And then they would have a really crap customer journey and it would be painful on both sides. There was also a big fraud landscape um, picture in this. And as the social media landscape has evolved, it's been very easy for someone to get someone's details and impersonate them. And this was another problem. One of our other founders came at this whole market of looking at identity from a really different perspective. I don't know if any of you have done Tough Mudder or Spartan races, crazy obstacle races of miles and miles in the countryside. So pouring rain. First of all, you have to queue up and get all your, your details, hand over your you know, passport or driving license, put it in a Ziploc bag, and then go to another queue, sign a health waiver, do your course, and then hopefully retrieve those documents at the end. Um, so the... Robin, our founder, who was working in the gaming business, visited this other um, obstacle race and said, this is really crazy. So about four years ago, they started to look at what were the other issues around identity. So um, looking at what the whole fraud landscape was doing, looking at the pain we're all facing online, filling in lots of details, the phishing um, attacks. What you can do at present with credit card ownership, but it doesn't really say who possesses that. Online, in the, on the dark web, it's very easy to get hold of details. So they started to look at, initially, more of the fraud harms. Later on, we've started to look at some other harms around the data side, around impact on young people, grooming, etc. But the initial genesis of Yoti was really looking at that. Um, we went out and spoke to people and actually found out what was people's current experience of proving their age or identity. And it was something they said was very much well, it's done to us. Um, somebody sends off and does a credit reference check when I'm going to get that sofa. Um, or I'm having to prove who I am online. I'm having to remember how much my monthly payment was for a sofa 10 years ago. A lot of sofas in the equation. And um, that wasn't something that they felt they had much agency about. And then likewise, going to clubs or festivals, people were having this in their back pocket, which isn't very good at Glastonbury or at the O2 or your you know, teenagers going to the cinema or the nightclub. So we thought there's got to be a better way. And can we move to the next slide? Oh, I've got a clicker. There we go. Technology. Fabulous. Um, so we looked at how could you with the world of phones, just find a way of having, effectively, at the, the very simplest, your ID on your phone, your passport, your driving license, a document. Um, and then we actually thought, well, if you're going to do this in the right way, what will give people trust in it? And people that we spoke to said very much, we want to be at the ascent of this. For goodness sake, it's our data. It's who we are. It's my passport. It's my driving license. It's just a real pain taking that round with me. So how could we do this in a different way? Um, so we did go through the, the B Corp setup. Um, we went through a process of looking at who could give us support and who could give us scrutiny. So we set up an external council, a guardian's council, which sounds a bit guardians of the galaxy. Um, but they meet quarterly. They hold us to account. All the minutes are published openly. And they're a cross between the sort of common sense outlook, but people with human rights background. Renata Avila, um, human rights lawyer from Guatemala. Doc Searle is a consumer rights champion. And Gavin's look more open banking and accessibility. But really looking at the heart, a key set of principles of looking at how do we look at our users at the centre, look at the privacy, the anonymity, where that's applicable, look at transparency, and up front, always let people know what they're sharing with whom. Look at how we make the community safe, and also very crucially on the accessibility, how do we make Yoti available? So wind forward now four years, a lot of R&D. Um, in just under one year, 3.2 million people around the world have set up a Yoti. Um, anyone from over 160 countries can set up, and then it means that they can share just parts of their identity, very simply. And going back to the previous um, Hayden's points about 
how you interact with people. We've set up a really different non-relational database at the center. Um, so there's not one column with everything of Julie's details, everything of Sue's, everything of a person. We've chopped up all the attributes, stored them separately, and we give the private key to the individual on their device. So only they can choose what they want to share with another organization. And we can never actually access their data. Only they can choose to share that. And the business model has nothing to do with advertising. It's always on a per check basis that an organization requests all, maybe for a full KYC, or just a little bit of data um, according to their need. So that could be, and I'll just wind forward, um, it could be identity verification for know your customer checks. It could be someone logging in. It could be someone just proving they're under 18 or over 18 or over 60 or signing documents. So that helps you in lots of different ways um, during your life. It could be in some areas, this has just been going through Heathrow, leave your data um, this securely in your bag or out of the way, and just your face is what helps you actually get through. And this is soon going through to a terminal. So ahead of time, directly from your digital identity, you share the data. Ahead of time, they know who is arriving. The details can't be mixed up on, on route. You can't mistype, forget when your passport's going to expire. And those details are shared directly ahead of time. Um, it could be for access to a government service, which is currently in the states of Jersey and part of Scotland. It could also be, though, in lots of other ones. So online dating. Um, in India, the number two online dating platform, you can sign up with your Facebook and LinkedIn, but also share just, say, the fact you're female or just over a certain age with that platform. Um, there's other uses as well, which are quite new. So the age estimation is one that is going to be going live in a US major supermarket, which basically allows us to just estimate your age and that image is directly deleted. And that's one of our areas in terms of accessibility that we think has a lot of potential. So you're not even having to set up the Yoti app. You're not even using a document. We just estimate your age because our algorithms have learned what does a 21-year-old face look like? Not mine. What does a 50-year-old face look like? What does a 70-year-old face look like? And that has also had its first experience with a social media company that wanted to know who was 13 to 17 and could be in that chat room and who was over 18. Um, and in over just under one month, five million age checks have been done by a social media platform that wanted to check that. So we're seeing lots of different applications, but I think at the root of it, having the external oversight that we've had from our guardians, working, for example, with Dot Everyone, with B Corps, um, we've held roundtables recently, bringing together a wide range of stakeholders to get input, to bring scrutiny to what we're doing, I think has been really helpful. So I hope that's some practical examples. I'm really happy to answer any questions.